day that God put it in my spirit. And I got a title today uh, for the message. And you hear this all the time. You probably heard this week. You probably read it on uh, Facebook. I'm sure you have. And this is a statement that we hear every week from somebody. Don't judge me. If you've heard that in the last week or so, while you're home. Amen. Or don't judge them is what we hear people say. If you say something that may affect somebody's family, and it, even if it's Bible-based, even if it's right straight out of the Word of God, they'll say, well, you ain't got no right to judge me. Or you can't judge me. Well, uh, we, 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 we really got the right to judge them, but we can't be fruit inspectors. Amen. The Bible says you'll know a tree by the fruit that it bears. Can a good tree bring forth bad fruit? Or can a bad tree bring forth good fruit? The Bible says that he can. So that's what I have to say. So I'm not going to judge nobody today as far as Matt's concerned. But I'm going to tell you what the Bible says. Amen. Well, I tell you, what I think don't really matter. But when I tell you what the Word of God says, you better take it to heart. Whoever is here today or whoever is listening on Facebook, there's hundreds of people that's going to be hearing this on Facebook. I might be defriended by the end of the day. But that's okay. Because I want to stand before God and God tell me that I preach as best I could the whole counsel of God. Amen. Not just the part that makes you shout or the part that makes you feel good. Yeah. But the part that if you're not doing like God says, it will, it will hurt you. It will convict you. Amen? Amen? It will make you want to pray and say, God, help me in this area of my life. Because we've all got them areas, ain't we? We all need some improvement. I know I do. Just ask people to work with them. Some of my close family, you'll know that I need some improvement. So I'm going to start today, uh, I need to be in the pulpit. Uh, I'm going to start first of all with one of our favorite scriptures, and I'll just quote it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And if we all should know that scripture, is John 3.16. Probably the most powerful scripture in the Bible. If not the most powerful, the most quoted. It's known in every language around the world. And Jesus died to save all men. Women, boys, and girls. He died to save everybody. That everybody would have an opportunity to go to Jesus. To go to heaven. Nobody's exempt. Anybody can be saved. Anybody. That neighbor that just disgusts you, or that family member, God can save them. Amen. Anything else being preached is false doctrine. I don't care who likes it or not. Anybody can be saved. Anybody can come under conviction. And God can save anybody from any situation. So, Jesus died that all men could be saved. The Bible says it's not God's will that any should perish, that all should come to repentance. Everybody. Repentance. What's repentance? Repentance is not coming to the altar and crying. Although when you repent it may bring tears. But that the act of the weeping and the crying is not repentance. I mean, I know it, it causes that because you're heavy laden and you're sorry for your sins and that's usually where the tears come from, is from, from the sorry part. I'm sorry that I've done this. I'm sorry that I've done that. And I'm sorry that I've lived against the Word of God. I'm sorry that I've done this. And that's usually what brings about the tears and the anguish is you are sorry. But being sorry is not repentance. Amen. To repent means that you ask for the forgiveness of it and you turn from it. And walk away from it. If someone was to come to the altar today and say, Lord, I, I repent of, of drinking or I repent of cursing. And you went back tomorrow on the job and 
or during the day that the Lord you've done those things, you never repented. Repent means that you turn from it. You turn around, you do a 180. Some have said a 360, but a 360 puts you back in the same spot. That's right. You do a 180. You turn and you walk the opposite way towards Jesus Christ. Amen. So with all that being said, I'm going to look first of all in the book of Revelation. I'm going to be skipping around a couple of places. Book of Revelation, chapter number 21. And God knows we're living in the most haphazard generation I've ever seen. More people now wanting their sin justified than I've ever seen in my life. People coming out of closets in every direction for every kind of sin and saying, don't judge me, don't do this, don't do that. Uh, God loves me. And He does. He loves every sinner. God loves every sinner. God loves everybody that's going to go to hell. He'll love them even though they're in hell. But they, they have a choice to make. So this may be a little different today. The reason I give you Revelation, I'll give you John 3, 16 first or so you know there is a way out of this. Revelation is 21, verses 6 through 8. The Bible says, somebody said the Bible says. The Bible says. All right. And he said unto me, it is done, and this is Jesus speaking. It is done. I'm Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. You understand he's speaking to the people who's already in heaven. The rapture's done taking place. The saints of God are in glory. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That thing's coming one day. Ain't you glad? I've heard several times this week people say, I wish the Lord would just come back this week. And today, I've heard that several times this week. Well, I'm in the same boat with you. Amen. I'm ready to sail in the home shore. Amen. I'm ready for the old ship of Zion to roll up into the dock and just hallelujah step off the dock into the gates of glory and be with Jesus Christ forever, Lord. I'm tired of pandemic. I'm tired of politics. I'm tired of a lot of life in general. I'm tired of so much negativity in the world today. Hallelujah. If there are any saints of God in the world today, there ought to be more positivity in the world than there is negativity. Yeah. Uh, sorry to say that half the church gives out more negativity than what the world does. And we ought to be, the Bible says that we ought to be the light of the world. Jesus, when he began his ministry, he would say, I am the light of the world. But as he was preparing to leave, he looked unto his disciples. Uh, he said, now you are the light of the world. Uh, I'm so tired of Christians bringing in uh, so much negativity. Let me tell you, that lost man who's on his way to the devil's hell, he's looking for some light somewhere. He's looking for somebody to share the light. He's looking for somebody to pull in the right direction. And half of the church today, that are pulling the same way the rest of the world is. They're wrapped up in politics. They're wrapped up in pandemics. They're wrapped up in this. They're wrapped up in that. Friends, you better be getting wrapped up in Jesus Christ. You better be getting wrapped up in the good news. You better be getting wrapped up in the gospel of Jesus Christ. If people read your Facebook to get some hope, are they getting any hope? If not, shame on you. Can I say that again? If people read your Facebook who are lost and on their way to the devil's hell, are they getting any hope? Are they getting any light? Are they just getting doom and gloom? I don't care if it hurts your feelings or not. You don't have to get over, friend. You will stand before God and give an account of what you put on, on, on social media. And if it brings everybody down, it discourages the lost man. You will stand before God and give an answer for that. First strike, hallelujah. Woo! He said that he would give these people that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. Already there, already in heaven. He's, he's addressing the saints of God. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Jesus himself said, if you're in any of these categories, 
then you will burn in hell. That's what the Bible says. Who is turkey non believes going to go to hell? Anybody that fits in those categories is what the Bible says. We cannot change what the Word of God says. I'm going to get a little bit more in depth on some of these things straight out of the book, what the Bible says. Look with us in the book of Hebrews, chapter 13 and verse 4. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 4. Pardon me because i got to find it too. Hebrews chapter number 13 and verse 4. I hope I wrote, wrote, wrote it down right. You don't realize the pressure up here. Unless you've been up here and preach. Amen. Because you want to get it right. Hebrews 13 and verse 4. Marriage. What is marriage? It's when two people come together and make vows to each other in the sight of God. And God's word specifies what marriage is. Marriage is honorable in all. The bed is undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers God will judge. We know, we know what hormones is, don't we? A harlot, be it male or female. We know what that is, don't we? We all understand that. And adulterers, God will judge. Who's adulterers? Adulterers is, is a man who's cheating on his wife. Or a woman who is cheating on her husband. That's adultery. Now you can't really commit adultery unless you're married, because it's called something else if you're not married. Don't get into that too. The Bible says that adulterers ain't gonna make it. Well, it's quiet today. People cheating on their spouse ain't gonna make them according to scripture. Not according to man, but according to scripture. So it's according to me too, because I believe the book. We might have some happy preaching in this little while. It's all wrong. Mm -hmm. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. I'm glad he's on my side. The Bible describes in other places what marriage is. Marriage is between one man and one woman. Not one man and another man, not one woman and another woman. I may get thrown off of social media now, but that's okay. That's what the Bible says. Not what Matt says. And it sure ain't what the New Age movement is saying. But the Bible says that marriage is between one man and one woman. And the only reason I'm reading this to you and telling you this is because I'm so tired of the statement of people saying, don't judge me. You know what they really want to say? In the back of their mind, this is what they're thinking. I'm in sin. I love in sin. I'm living in sin. And I'm really going down deep inside and going to hell. That's what they're thinking in the back of their mind. But to cattle that, they look at the preachers and they look at the church and they look at the saints of God and say, don't judge me. You're already judged. I'm already judged. We'll be judged by the, the volumes of this book. We're judged by the Word of God. So do we need a judge? Not really, because Jesus Christ will be the just and the righteous judge. And He will judge us by the book. Not by what Oprah Winfrey says or, or the New Age movement or any uh, star in Hollywood. Some athlete that's paid more money than all of us worth. You won't be judged by what they're saying. You'll be judged by what the old Bible says. The B-I-B-L-E, yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone the word of God. The B-I-B-L-E. What does B-I-B-L-E mean? Basic instructions before leaving earth. This is your roadmap to heaven. If you live in any of these lifestyles, 
every day of your life, the Bible says that you will be cast in along into a lake of fire. I think sometimes we want to make everybody so happy when we preach and sing that we forget that there's also a judgment side of God. Don't get me wrong. Nobody likes to shout more than I do. Now, I don't want to stand before God with nobody's blood dripping from my hands. The Bible says, I love to tell you, and I don't tell you, that your blood shall be required at my hands. That's not just for the preacher, that's for every saint of God. You're playing around with your family's feelings because you don't want to hurt their feelings, and, and they're living in a lifestyle that's completely opposite of what God's Word says. If you don't warn them, if you don't say the Word of God, their blood on judgment day will drip from the end of your fingers. That's what His Word says. If you don't believe it, see me after church, I'll give you the scripture. It's in the game. There are souls in the balance. Do you know those people will not tell the truth to their family because they don't want to hurt their feelings? If truth is needed, I will speak it. Because I'll be judged with, about what truth I spoke and what truth I held inside because of feelings. Let me continue. Where's all the shouters at today? Look with us in 1 Corinthians 7 and verse 2. 1 Corinthians 7 and verse 2. I want to give it verse 1 to 1 Corinthians chapter 7 starting with verse 1. Now this is Paul preaching to the church of Corinth. Corinth was a messed up place. So he had to preach to the people who become Christians there. And he had to lay the cards on the table. The church needs to lay the cards on the table. The preachers do. Amen. Now concerning the things wherewith whereof you wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Now we gotta read on. Boys don't get all tore up. Because my mother knows I love mine. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication. Let every man have his own wife. And let every woman have her own husband. Let the husband render unto the wife do benevolence, and likewise the wife unto her husband. I told some people here recently, being a pastor for more than 28 years, now I'm just going to say it because it's true. You just have to deal with it. The two major reasons for divorce is what happens in the bank account and what does or does not happen behind closed doors. Husbands, your wife should have no need to look anywhere else. I'm getting up in your business, ain't I? She should be well taken care of in every aspect of her life. Wives, your husband should not have to look elsewhere for affection. That's your responsibility. That's your job, can I say. Or your... God says that in order to avoid fornication. What's fortification? And I know we have children here, so I'm being careful. Fortification is intimate relationships that's forbidden by Scripture. Homosexuality. Touching unmarried people past a certain degree. That's fortification. Fortification is intimate relationships outside of marriage. 
If you're shacking up, don't expect to go to heaven. We may have a small crowd next week. If you continue your lusting after other people, don't expect to make heaven your home. Because the Bible says the fornicators won't go. Fornication is any intimate relationship outside of marriage that God forbids. It's happening everywhere. There's people shacking up everywhere. I was in a place of business several years ago and I ran across a lady who used to come to our church. But you've got to understand the lady. I'm trying to be nice. I saw her in the store and I said, How are you doing? I'm shacking. Now that was her response to me. You used to be a pastor. I'm shacking. I'm shacking up my look. Boy, it's quiet today. No horns blowing. You may be shacking up. And you may be loving it. But if you don't get saved and get right one day, you ain't going to love it. You will spend eternity separated from God. If you're man enough to sleep with him, you should be man enough to marry him. You want enough to sleep with him, be one enough to marry him. Amen. Now that's Bible. That's Scripture. If you do it any other way outside of the marriage bond, you are a fornicator. And the Bible says fornicators ain't going. I have to I have to tell you this. What would happen if I preached around all this stuff and never warned you? Not just those who drove me in here today, but the, the hundreds who are listening across social media. And, and, and if I leave a service and they feel like that sin that really is okay with God, I'm going to have to give an answer to God for that. They need to know how I stand on things and how our church stands. I just stand on whatever, he, whatever the Bible says is what I believe. Mm. But don't lose heart. There's hope for you, fornicator. The Bible goes also in the book of Revelations and other places and uh, deals with all these different types of things that will not inherit the kingdom of God. The Bible says that drunkards ain't going to make it. And I know you got a debate on social drinking and all that, and, and I'm not going to get into the, the specifics of that. The Bible does specify a drunkard. A drunkard is somebody who goes to excess and becomes drunk. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna tell everybody this and that. If you got a little sip or if you do, I ain't getting into all that. If you do whatever you do and you feel okay inside of God, that'll be between you and God. I know I can never go back and touch anything because I know where it put me. And let me tell you, since I got a hold of the new wine of the blood of Jesus Christ, there ain't no old man walking can touch it. And you have 
happened to be in that environment, can I get a witness of you this place? Woo! You got to have a drink toe of your spouse? Somebody needs some deliverance. I think the mic is shut down. Amen. Boy, preaching some hard things today. But I'll give an account for it. You all know them. I've given account for everything I say to you today. Where do we get to? Somebody tell me real loud. Oh, we've got ways to go. Man. First Corinthians 7 verse 2. Yeah, we done got in that marriage thing, ain't we? Yeah. Yep. Husbands, take care of your wife in every aspect. Wives, take care of your husband in every aspect. There's other scriptures that tells you not to part from the intimate relationship except it be for fasting and praying. And the Bible says, come together again that you be not tempted. We're preaching this on public stuff, ain't we? They need to know it. You young kids who are anticipating marriage one day and you newlyweds, you who are engaged, you better read the Bible and learn how to treat your spouse before you ever get there. I wish I'd learned a lot more things before I said I do. I've been a much better husband than what I've been. Can I get a witness? Amen. I had a a friend, a preacher friend. And his mother-in-law was a preacher. Now I'm not getting into the specifics of that, but they said she was a, a fireball. But her husband, you know where her husband was? A drunk. She was a preacher. And he was a drunk. She would lock him out of the house. She wouldn't be a wife to him. You know what happened? He got lonely. And he began to have another fire. And I looked at this man in the eyes who's also a preacher. I said, you know whose fault that is? It was her fault. She married him for better or for worse. He wasn't a mean man or nothing like that. He just liked to drink. She made him feel like the scum of the earth. Slept in different rooms and we we'll lock him out of the house. I'm talking to the preacher. Doing her own husband that way. I said, maybe if she would show him a little more compassion and love, she might have won him to the Lord. They ended up getting divorced and the story goes on. Blah, blah, blah. Amen. Go back and look at the Song of Solomon. You ain't got to go there now. The Bible will explicitly tell you how to treat your spouse in that book. It tells you how to love your spouse. It's also, also speaking of the relationship between you and God. Go read it sometime. You can read it in about an hour or two hours, I think like seven chapters. Now I know that we're getting into some stuff today that's probably got some toes pulled up under your front seat and got some people sweating on your stern wheel and all that. But good. That's what we're aiming for. If these things offend you, then you need to be offended. If they hurt your pride, your pride needs to be hurt. The Bible says pride comes before the fall. Amen. You know pride is one of the worst sins in the Bible? The sin of pride? Let me tell you, we all need a Savior. We all got to be saved from sin. Nobody's perfect. And it goes on to say that the wife has no power over her body or the husband over his. They fraud not one another in verse 5. And it says in verse 6, I speak this by permission and not by uh, a commandment for I will that all men or even as myself and what he was speaking because he wasn't married and didn't feel the need for it at this time and in his life uh, but every man hath his proper gift of God and after this manner and another after that I say therefore to the unmarried widows and the widows it is good for them to stay of body even as I he, he goes on his, the more specifics of married it goes, it goes into a great depth but now I want you to look into the book of, go back to, actually one chapter back, 1 Corinthians 6, verses 9 to 11. 
My main focus is to tell you today who's not going to make it to heaven. I know I got off on some other things in my marriage, but somebody needed to hear it today. Amen. Amen. God compares himself in a church as a husband and a wife. God don't want me cheating on him. God don't want me not paying him attention. In fact, the Bible says, kiss the son lest he be weary. Speaking of giving worship and honor to Jesus Christ, which is due to him, our spiritual groom. Amen. Same thing goes in the marriage. Amen. Praise the Lord. 1 Corinthians 6, verses 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators. I'll talk to you about that. The little teaching of what a fornicator is. No idols. Now see, you got to see. It says fornicators, no idols. That's people that have idols. Well, preacher, I've got an idol. And I'm not trying to be ugly. You may be sitting in <laughs> If you polish your car more than you read your Bible, you have an idol. Uh oh. Mm -hmm. You may not have a gold calf. But you may have, I'm afraid to say any kind of car because you might be sitting in one. But if your wherever man's heart is, wherever uh, your heart is, it's going, it's going to be your life. Whatever is most important to you. There's I, I, I seen a thing years ago, and it was a true story. This man was out in the driveway, and he was cleaning up his car. And he was, had it all shined up, an antique car, or whatever it was. And his little boy, about three years old, four, it, 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 it hurts me to tell you this story. Three or four year old boy, his boy, finds a screwdriver that dad left laying. And he comes down on one side of the car and just runs the screwdriver down it, not knowing any better. His dad, in a fit of rage, takes a hammer and lays that boy's hands on whatever he laid it on and beat his hands till he could not use them. True story. Why? Because that car was his eye. My son and my daughter and my little grandbaby is more important than anything I have. Amen. My wife, it breaks my heart to tell you that story. You can look it up and read it for yourself. I don't think the little boy ever regained use of his hands like he needed. Because Dad thought more of a shiny paint job in a car than he did his own little boy. Make sure that possessions don't become idols. Don't get me wrong. Take care of what God's blessed you with and, and take good care of it. But when you get down to the end of the road, God's not really going to be concerned how many cured your yard was. Because if he was, I would be in trouble. Can I do this? He's not going to be overly concerned. In fact, he won't be at all concerned how your carpet looks in your house or in your car. God won't be concerned if you had dust or did not have dust on your dash with your car. There's some people, if you were to get on a red truck, I'd drive to work. You'd be afraid you'd get tired for why? Because I wake pain with it and I use on the farm and sometimes it don't smell where it's present. I mean, it's not an idol to me. It's a something God gave me to use. Be careful what you over-react to and put before everything else. Please, if you need, stay in need. Don't be like me. Amen. I enjoy life. 
The Bible says idolaters are not going to make it to heaven. Now, I'm not saying that you are one of those, but God will say on judgment day. Amen? Let's go a little further. Verse 3. Do you not know that the saints shall judge the world the way? Uh oh. The way the preacher on. That hurts your feelings right there. Let's go back. Let's get down a little more. No, you, verse 9. Know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, be not fornicators, and that's, I think that's where we stop on the next one. Either troops and adulterers. See, the Bible separates a fornicator from an adulterer. The Bible makes it specifically plain that fornicators and adulterers are two different things. Fornication is everything that's ungodly in, in the intimate relationship of a man or woman outside of marriage. Adultery is cheating on your spouse. And it says these people's not going to inherit the kingdom of God. Nor, that's a hard word, infinite. Infeminate, thank you, sir. And that encompasses a lot of things, and we won't get into all that. Nor abuses of themselves with mankind. Uh, that will get into uh, alternate lifestyle, but I'm not going to go very far in it. You know what it means. I done told you, man, woman, woman, man, period. End of story. One man, one woman, period. Nothing else. I don't care what you said you was born with. That's a bunch of baloney out of the pits of hell. I wasn't born a drunk. I, ch I chose to be born one day. He said that I was born with this. Yes, but everybody here was born with weaknesses. Everybody here was born with things that, that later on in your life would cause you to be tempted. I was tempted by many things. I was tempted by alcohol. I was tempted by this and by that. I had all kinds of temptations. But one day I had to break my temptation. There were the altars of God. And said, God, I can't do it no more. I can't win. I'm going to hell with no change. And thanks be to God, the blood of Jesus.
And it would go through my mind, but I'll tell you what, sometimes I like to quit it all and go back. Is anybody ever thought that? You've never thought about giving up? There's been times I've thought about it. But there was something on the inside that wouldn't let me. Oh, I know what it's like to give it all up. I backslid for several years. I was about 13 years old when I gave my heart to the Lord the first time. But when I became a little older, I turned my back on God. And I lived in sin until I was about 22. Drinking, partying. My idol was my little red Ford pickup. Bought a brand new Ford Ranger in 1987, unbeknownst to my newlywed wife. Got married in October, got a brand new truck on June the 13th. For five years, if you had not bought that truck, we could have made the bills this week. For five years, that's what I heard. But see, that truck was my idol. Oh, I drive by Watson's Ford over there, and that little pretty red Ford was sitting there. And I lusted after it. Lust means uncontrollable desire. And I thought, man, that's a good looking truck, and wouldn't I look good in it? So one day she's gone with her cousin, and I just drive through the lot, not intending to buy. Left the 71 Mach 1 Mustang, which looked just like a Mach 1, that would have been worth more than 13 of trucks nowadays. I left that pretty petty blue bus thing in the parking lot and come home with a brand new Ford pickup. And what got me, I got in and drove it and I come back and said, man, it's got the power for a Ford. Oh, that's not a force. That's a fuel injector 2.9. I was sold at that moment. I tried to find Lisa, she don't believe this, but I tried to find her to get her approval. I could not find her. I signed the paper and took it home. I would get out there and I'd polish that truck. Rub all over that truck. Can you hear this? That idol almost cost me my marriage. Be careful what you make your idol. I know people who a brand new vehicles, everything to them. I mean, they can't sleep, eat, or drink until they get it. Let me tell you, you need a different God. That's right. You need Jesus Christ. Don't get me wrong. God don't care if you have nice things. Don't get me wrong. It's all, it's all about the heart. Where's the heart at? What's your heart? Amen? It says, Revelers nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Then I like verse 11. And such were some of you, but you are washed. Hallelujah. I'm glad I'm washed today. I know.
I know what 52 years feels like. To be 53. Look at your next. I know how that feels. To be honest with you, it feels like it's been about 25 years. It flies by now. But there's come a time where we'll wage. Amen. Where you won't hurt no more. Where the prayers on your way to work won't be praying for people to get healed. Do you understand even when we get to heaven there will be no praying for the lost anymore? A burden lifted. If you're going to pray for the lost, you better do it now. I, 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 I'm convicting myself. If we were concerned about the lost man as we should be, there'd be a lot more fasting. This preaches to me. But also some things have only about fasting and praying. How much have you fasted for your child? How much have you fasted for your wife, for your husband, your children, your grandchildren? How much have we fasted? I think we're going to call a fast today. We're not fasting for wisdom on building this new church. We're not calling for fast to of the direction in our lives. But let's call a fast right now. A time of fasting. So let's fast for 40 days. Now, however you fast, is up to you. And I'm calling on it right now. I've got friends and family who's going to heaven. Family members who's going to heaven. So I'm going to pray down the fast for myself. It may be a meal a day. It may be fasting for a couple days of everything. But, and then start off fasting whatever I need to fast. I challenge you for the next 40 days to fast something that you enjoy. Something that you like. If you can do it with or without salt and fast. Don't fast something. If you can do without it, don't fast it. But maybe you're today and you're, you got a sweet tooth. Nobody got a sweet tooth? Don't worry about their future now. Fast it for a few days. Fast something and say, God, I want you to say, I want it. And I believe God will answer that. I believe God will honor that, don't you? Look with me in closing in 1 John chapter number 1. Right before Revelations. 1 John chapter 1. In verse 9. Let's get verse 8. That's good. Now let's go back to 6. If we say that we have fellowship with him and we walk in darkness, what does that mean? Walking in sin, living in sin. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and we do not the truth. My daughter here a couple years ago with a friend of hers were debating over the alternate lifestyle and you know where that's going. And this person was trying to justify that decision in their own life. Let me tell you, a little cold didn't back down. She stood her ground, even in high school. She stood her ground and said, no, the Bible says one man and one woman. The Bible says that it's a sin. The Bible says that it's wrong. And she, she had to take a lot of smart remarks and a lot of sneers and the old dirty looks and stuff. She had to deal with a lot because she stood her ground. I would rather stand my ground and nobody like me than to bow down and say, yeah, you're okay. Because I would give an account for that one person. And I said it was okay to live the way they was living. Now, I don't want you to go out here and go to the bars and everybody and begin to preach to people how bad they are. That ain't how you're a winner. You're a winner by the life that you live in front of them. Make, 
Make sure, no matter what kind of lifestyle you're living, make sure they know that you love them no matter what. And you'll win them to Jesus Christ. Amen. Says, uh, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one with another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Hallelujah. I'm, everything I've preached to you today, everything I've told you that God calls sin, the Bible says that we would walk with him, that we would walk in fellowship with him, that the blood of Jesus shall set us free, that the blood of Jesus shall save us. Free. I've dealt with it. 
I've had to deal with these things in my own life. I've had to deal with a lot of these things that I read to you that God called sin and said they ain't going to go to heaven. I've had to deal with these things in my life. And I've had to bring them to the cross of Calvary. He nailed all of our sins and iniquities to his cross. All you got to do is accept it. All you got to do is believe it and follow after him. He said, I'll make you fishermen of men. If the Lord deals with your heart out, let me say something before we start our call. If you're here and you're a deacon, or you're a leader of this church, I need you to get, get out of your car or from where you're at. I need you to be up here where you can see headlights and horns. We had some people leave here last week that get prayed for. That's sad. We need to be aware. If you're a deacon or leader of the church and you you can go pray with people. I need you up here to preach or whoever. Had a little couple last, last week that needed prayer and I didn't realize it. If you're here today, I want you all to come up here right now. We can see good. Y'all can come here and stand in the shade if you want to. Deacon, lay leaders, preachers. Whoever, if you, I don't, just whoever in the church that is not, not afraid to go pray with people, come up here. You ain't got a call in your car with them, but you can go to the window and ask them, and, and they ain't got to tell you nothing. And just lay hands on the car and say, God, I'm agreeing with this person. And so if you're here today as they begin the music, and you have a need, would you flash your lights right now and say, we need somebody to agree with us. We're going through something right now, and we need some help. Maybe you're here today and you've got lost children, lost loved ones. You need somebody to agree with you. Flash your lights right now. And we'll oh, send people your way. Go over to Kathy's car. We'll let me go over there to Kathy's car. Just one of you. Somebody else. There's a lights behind uh, Charles and Kerry's pickup. Go over and have a pray. Anybody else? There's another set of lights right beside Charles and Kerry. The Anybody else say we need some help? We need somebody to agree with. Don't you look the people come to help you pray? There's all kinds of men in our little comfort zone, and they're coming to help you pray. The little Mitsubishi right now, the front car over to the right from the telephone pole in the front. Flash their lights. The white car behind Kiri still got their lights on. Anybody else have any need right now? Flash your lights right now. You got a son or a daughter in the same place that you want to agree with you today. Send your hand out the window. The seven way pickup with a big sign on the back. He's flashing his lights. Go pray with him. If you need to be saved, please tell him to come to your car. And I need to be saved. The Bible says all you got to do is to be with Jesus Christ. Before my Lord Jesus Christ, I believe my heart that God prayed with me. Thou shalt be saved. Don't worry. Tell him to give me of my sins. I believe it's your blood. Can save you from us. So that's all you got to do. Is ask the Lord to forgive you of your sins. Anybody else? We still got people who want to come help somebody pray. Anybody else need help? Hallelujah. God will give you praise, honor, and glory. Hallelujah. Anybody else? Now I'm going to go a step further. Because I'm not going to leave nobody out. If you have a special need and you need the church to agree with you, if you feel welcome to come down here and right in front of what I'm at, and we'll agree to get with you as a church. We're trying to do this same right. We're trying to keep our social distance because that's what we're supposed to be doing. Would you come? If you have a need, you will hold church to pray with you. Come up right now. And we'll just agree with you. Anybody whatsoever, let's praise Him. Let's give Him honor and glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody else got me right now? Flash your lights. Blow your four ways on. Blow your horn. Before we go home, can we give him some honor and glory that he's so worthy of? He died, sad, and I broke through. And the adulteress 
the fornicators and the drunkards and the liars. And he said that all those things are he was some of your word. But that you've been washed. Hallelujah. Some of you come down here and bring the prior pleasure. The believers need somebody to bring with her prior. They're bring with her today. Hallelujah. God, you got me through. 
What you going to do? And I know this, and I, I, was, I was trying to minister to somebody this week about a child who had been abused. A couple of kids inside. And it seemed such horrid things. Now, so let me tell you, God's going to raise any kids up one day. And they're going to use that to help somebody else. Some of y'all been through some things. Now, I'm not saying God ordains all these things. and God, it's, it's sin that brings us about. But you went through it. Cross went through it, but you made it through. You look back on your life and you can see some things that was horrible, things that were terrible. I had generational curses put on me that I don't understand. But I had a God. I know God. He set me free from generational curses. Oh, I believe that. That's Bible. Who believes that today? That God can set you free. Go back and read your Bible. These things you can do in your life will affect the next seven generations. And God has set me free. God's delivered me. Can I get a witness? What the hell that you went through? God's going to use it for His glory. Yeah. Can I do it to say that? There will be somebody God will put in your life and they feel like they have no hope and there's no way out and they will look at you and you're going to get a moment and you're going to begin to speak and you will tell them what God brought you through. And they will leave with some hope. And you may even be the one that leads them to Jesus Christ. Some of them are already saved. They're struggling about these things. They need some saint of God who's been there and done that. This is hey. I've been by it, and God made me through it. God led me through it. One of my favorite verses in the Bible, David, when he was reading from this first line, he said, Yea, the Lord walked to the valley, even of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. He was speaking of God's word, amen. He said, it's your word, God, that comforts me. Yea, go up to the valley of the shadow, that I shall feel no evil, for thou art with me. Thy God and thy staff, they comfort me, thou prepares a table before me. Now listen to this, in the presence of my enemy. God said, I will put a table in front of you. It's going to be a table of blessing that your enemy is going to see it. They're going to be scratching their head. Now that's God's word. David said, God, you're going to put a table before me and my enemies will know you've done. I ain't got to spend my life getting even. One thing you'll rarely see me do is try to defend myself. I don't have to. And sometimes I worry about people trying to defend themselves. Why are they trying to defend themselves? I'm talking about when people say things about you. You ain't, you ain't got to stoop to that level. They may have made your name out to be much. You ain't got to say a word. Say, so why? That's what Jesus done. He's running around saying it's all ours, didn't he? The only thing Jesus said, when I, I think it was Pilate looked at him and said, Art thou out the Christ? He put it back in his lap. He said, Thou sayest thy words. That's all he said. I think sometimes we waste our time trying to plead our case so people look at us different. I ain't got to do that. If I fought with everybody who's run my name through the mud 27 years, I'd be fighting every minute of my life. I got better things to do. It'll be God that glorifies, God that justifies, God that brings it out, God that, that does what needs to be done. Had a situation in the church several years back. I had a deacon take me to the side and he followed me out for an hour, over an hour. Rode around in my truck and he laid it on me, heavy. And I looked at him and I said, well, the truth will come out. And he had a look at me like, you ain't going to say that? I said, nope, the truth will come out. And he, he, I mean, he was throwing me in with some of us. But it was all spiritual concern, so I didn't have, I didn't want to have to fight. I just listened for about an hour and a half in my truck. On my gas. And we got back to the church and went to part of the way, and I said, okay. I don't know how you feel now. You ain't gonna say that? I said, oh, truth come out. About six, sometimes it takes a while for it to come out. About six months later, him and his wife come to me and said, You know what? We heard the truth today. I said, I told you to come out. 
Amen. I ain't got to run around and plead my case. Amen. Now you come against my wife and my kids, I'm going to plead something all right. Amen. And that's, that's a whole different. I'm talking about they bring you, trying to bring you down spiritually. You ain't got to do that. You ain't got to lower yourself to the devil. Amen. Stand your ground and say, God will bring the truth out. Amen. Somebody need that. I don't know. Somebody might need that. Anybody got anything for me to dismiss? Word of testimony, something like to say for the Lord. Anybody at all? Ain't God good? He is so good. I love you. We love you. I'm having a blast in Freeze Ball Park. God is moving. We, all, we meet here on Wednesday nights. We all get up here. And please, when you do come and you do get up here, social distance. Because that's what we have to do. We have to social distance to stay uh, where we need to be with the higher ups. We actually, I think, had people photograph us last week. They, I don't care about that, but we want you to think about your family. If I've got something, I sure don't want to give it to you. And it's not about you. It's about what I can give somebody else. So if, if we come Wednesday, please sit with your family and leave a little space between you. Just use a little bit. Sometimes it's just wisdom. Amen. If I've got the food, I'm going to come and breathe in your nose. Amen. Just use a little common sense. Uh, and I, I, I try not to say a lot, but we just pray about this election. Pray. Seek the face of God. Pray, amen. And when you pray, the one way you can go, I'm just going to tell you that. Uh, pray about all the deceitfulness going on in our nation right now. Trying to uh, rig it. Now they, what I felt about it yesterday, pretty vocal yesterday, amen. amen. So, uh, I need to pray for our nation. We, we're at the most strategic place we've ever been in as a conservative people. That's how I'm going to say it. As a conservative people, and you can't be a Christian unless you're conservative. That's in, in store. But we're at the most crucial point we've ever been in. So please pray for our nation. Pray for God to just open up heaven and great things to happen. Amen? Amen. All right. Uh, remember, uh, Wednesday night, please come out for Wednesday night. Because anything we need to announce, you know? All right. Nobody's going to call this. This is the part. Lord, we thank you for the same for all your many blessings. We thank you for the opportunity to worship you no matter how the thing looks. Just a blessing and an honor to worship you. We pray that you would go with each and every one as they go throughout their week. That you would let them be a light for you because above all our main goal is to tell others about you. We pray that we would be able to witness to someone and bring them with us to church Sunday. That we would say, see souls saved, people set free and delivered. We thank you for your sweet spirit that we felt this morning. And we thank you for our church family and the unity that we feel. We thank you that you hold tomorrow. We don't know what tomorrow holds, but we know you're already there. And we pray that you would bless each and every one of your listeners. In Jesus' name.